Now take a look at this simple sample data set. What did you notice? I'm sure you noticed that something is actually odd right here and that is 30. Compared to other variables in this data set of R, 30 is actually extremely large. So in this case, 30 is an outlier. Let's take another example. You can also notice that 2 is actually extremely small in value compared to other variables in this data set. So definitely, 2 right here is an outlier. In the concept of mathematics and statistics, including data analysis, whenever we have a single variable that is either extremely large or extremely small, when compared to other variables in our data set, we call that single variable or those variables, we call them outliers. Hi, and you are welcome to another YouTube video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the concept of outliers and how to extract outliers from our data sets using Excel. So before I actually jump into the video properly, I have a question for you. Take a look at this sample data set. Which of the following variables right here is actually an outlier? I want you to take a closer look at this sample data and tell me the outlier. Go to the comment section and drop your answer and wait to the end of the video where I actually reveal the outliers or if there is any outlier in this data set. <laughs> Whether you are performing statistical analysis or data analysis or you are just a proper math and stats student, you are going to be coming across outliers in every of your calculations and that begs the question, do I need to extract outliers or do I need to actually leave them in my data set? How much damage can outliers actually cause to my data set? I would be answering this question by using the concept of mean. You know, the mean is very important to us in the world of statistics and uh, you know, the mean can actually be used as the center value of our data set but one of the downside of the mean is based on the fact that the mean is actually affected heavily affected by outliers let's take a look at this data set of ours the average which is the mean of this data set is going to be the sum of all the variables divided by the size of the sample data set and that is going to be 12 divided by 5 which gives us 2.4 now let's assume we want to replace the last value right there which is 2 we want to replace it with an outlier let's say 30 so we have the new sample data to be 2 3 3 2 and 30. You can see exactly what a single outlier can do to your data set. It's moved to the mean of our data set from 2.4 down to 5. Now imagine what several outliers will actually do to your data set. And when the value of the mean of a data set actually changes, it actually changes the sense of the data set. So it simply implies that if you have outliers in your data set, it's going to kind of in quotes, skew your data, make your data actually uh, tilt towards a specific direction, which is not what we need when it comes to performing hypothesis testing in the world of statistics and data analysis. So before you perform your statistical analysis on your data sets, you have to uh, extract outliers. Now there are actually a couple of ways in which you can use to extract outliers from our data set. Uh, in fact, we have like 34 of them, but I'm going to be touching just uh, the basic ones that is actually very important to us, and that is the using of box plot and the interquartile range method also known as the IQR. When you plot the box plot of a data set and the data set has an outlier, you'll be able to see these outliers uh, above the last line of the box plot which is uh, the maximum value and it's as simple as that. But most times we actually don't use this approach because it is really not accurate so we prefer to use the other method which is the interquartile range and this is how this method simply works so for you to use the interquartile range to actually extract out outliers from your data set you basically have to like set up a boundary like this fence that kind of shields value for you so we have the upper boundary and we have the lower boundary the lower boundary of this fence is actually q1 minus 1.5 times iqr where your q1 represents the lower quarter which is the first quartile and the upper boundary in this case of ours is going to be equals to q3 plus 1.5 times iqr where q3 represents the upper quartile or the third quartile any value that is actually lesser than the lower boundary is considered as an outlier and any value that is greater than the upper boundary is also considered as an outlier so any value that is within the lower boundary and the upper boundary is actually not an outlier and it those are the data set that we are actually supposed to work with if you need better explanation about the concept of the third quarter the first quarter and the iqr i have a video right here for you that you can just go check out after watching this video so let us move in 
into Excel and use the box plot method and the interquartile range method to actually extract out outliers from the sample data sets that I gave to you at the beginning of the video as uh, a question. And here's our data set. If we are supposed to use the box plot method, we are supposed to just uh, construct a box plot for our data set. And if there's an outlier in our data set, then we are going to be seeing the outlier. So all we have to do is to just um, select the data set come to insert and locate the box plot so let's just come to recommended chart right here all the chart and box plot and whiskers and this is it right here and this is the uh, box plot for our data set so let's edit this and call it data okay so as you can see uh, there is no outlier actually over here in our data set. We don't have any dots right here or something. So it simply implies that there are actually no outliers in our data set using the box plot method. It's as simple as that. But remember I said something that this um, method is not really accurate and it's most time preferred not to be used. Okay. So that means there's a chance that there are actually outliers in this data set. But this uh, box plot method could not extract it. So let us um, use the interquartile range method so all I have to do is just take this towards the left so I'll have to create a new space so I can call this place outliers uh, so um, I can call this Q1 which represents the first quarter I call this Q3 which represents the third quarter then I call this the IQR excuse me I call this the IQR which represents the interquarter range so we need our lower bound our lower uh, boundary we can just see the lower bound and uh, right here we have the upper bound so for our first quarter we actually use the excel function equals to then we press q u a r we can see the quarter function right here then uh, it asks for the array so we actually uh, click from here down to here that is uh, a2 down to a11 and we click on comma then it asks for the quarter then we click on the first quarter which is this and then we click on enter it gives us the value of the first quarter which is a 15.25 we come down to the third quarter and we use the same technique so that's equals to q u a r it brings this out click on quarter we click on the array a2 down to a11 we click on comma it brings this out and then we click on the third quarter and we have that as 35 so the next is for us to get our iqr and the iqr which is the interquartile range is the difference between the third quarter and the first quarter and that's going to be uh, equals to that's d2 uh, minus c2 and that's going to give us the value of the iqr the interquartile range which is at 19.75 so the lower bound is actually uh, q1 minus 1.5 times iqr so let's quickly make an excel formula for that so that's equals to so that's us c2 which represents the q1 so we have c2 minus open the brackets that's 1.5 times iqr does a this and boom it gives us the value of the lower boundary which is actually for minus 14.375 rather then we actually need to do the same for the upper bound and that's going to be uh, equals to we have a q3 our q3 right here is actually the third quarter which is a cell d2 so we have d2 we have plus open the bracket 1.5 times our iqr is a uh, e2 click that and this is it right here so it gives us the value of the upper bound as 64.625 now we have the lower bound we have the upper bound we have the fence that we need so it's time for us to actually get the outliers for this data set of r so i'm going to be using the all function right here so i press equals to we have a uh, or so this is my all function right here so logical one so for this all function of art it's going to be about any value lesser than the lower bound which is minus 14.375 should actually be tagged as an outlier so that is true and any value that is greater than uh, the upper bound which is 64.625 should be tagged as an outlier which is also true the value is not lesser than the lower bound or greater than the upper bound it should be tagged as false so that means it is not an outlier so we have our uh, a2 right here so i'm going to be pressing f4 after pressing the a2 so that i can actually make an absolute uh, reference cell meaning anything i do right here it's not going to affect the values of the lower bound and the upper bound so that's why i'm pressing f4 so i'm pressing f4 rather and you see it has it has added this uh, dollar sign right here so uh a2 lesser 
done uh we have f2 comma and uh a2 press the f4 sign again is greater than uh so that's going to be g2 I can also use the absolute value right here for this by pressing F2, F4 rather, and uh, right here to I give it F4. All right. So enter, and as you can see, it gives me false. So we can drag all of those right down here, and we have all of them right here to be false. So what this is actually telling us is that our data set does not contain any form of outliers meaning all of them are actually right and we can use them for our data analysis or statistical analysis and this is how you use excel and the iqr method to actually extract outliers from our data set so what was your answer did you get it right did you get it wrong i'm sure by this time you've seen the right solution to this question do you have any questions for me or you feel i missed something please go down to the comment section and drop those questions of yours i'll be willingly and very happy to actually attend to them if you want to learn more about the concept of the first quarter the third quarter the second quarter and the idea of the box plot i have a video right here for you that you can just go check out thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one bye for now